With no code, you can build some awesome stuff and make a lot of money, y'all. Watch this. Cut to the chase. There is no best no code app builders. However, for non tech founders who want to create an app without coding, here's what I would recommend as the safest option for web, bubble, for mobile, drop it. If you think that. Okay, so first of all, you said uh, for web is bubble. And I'm gonna show you guys some stuff. I got 10 key uh, takeaways from this, and you might wanna write these things down. As always, our AI tools are in the first pinned comment. All you need, links are in the description. Go ahead and click into them. I wish you all the best. If you'd like to hear my rationale and get some advice from a humble app developer, keep watching. I'd like to share how I think non-tech founders can approach no-code app builders to maximize short and long-term gains. They are incredibly useful, but even the best tools needs good strategy and execution. And that's what I would like to talk about. In case it isn't obvious, I'm a fan of no-code for non-tech founders. The idea of people without non-technical knowledge developing their own software from scratch is amazing. Before this, if you wanted to build a software MVP, you'd have to pay a developer or learn to code yourself. Then realize it was way too hard and pay a developer anyways. With no code app builders, now he's not lying. Like some of the websites that you guys like frequent nowadays, you know, cost like thirty thousand dollars and everything to build out back in the day. Thirty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. A lot of these e-commerce platforms. But now when you go to uh, uh, platforms like Bubble or uh, softer, uh, you'll find like no code website templates for them where you can literally just purchase them for like 29 bucks, put your name on it, maybe add or switch out a couple features and make it your own. So he's not lying now. Like now you can leverage no code SaaS and kill it. You can truly build your own MVP and validate it for a fraction of what engaging a professional would cost. Here's the thing though, there are a million no-code app builders out there. All of them lead to an MVP. Then what? What do you want to do after MVP? Knowing early on will help answer the following questions. How do you choose a no-code app builder? But Adrian, you already recommended the no-code app builders at the start of the video. Yes, I did. I'll explain myself before the end of this video. For now, you are the one who's getting the project off the ground, whose opinion actually matters at this stage. Here's a hint. I'd like you to ask yourself, what do you foresee happening after getting your idea validated? Do you want to keep working on development yourself? Do you just want your damn MVP? Never mind what happens after. When you really think about what you want and how to get there, you own your decision. You also gain valuable insight into how to deal with developers. Okay, so just in case you guys you know, don't really understand them, I'm gonna give you guys five popular websites or apps that were built with no code AI. Uh, I need you, to, you guys to understand uh, the heaviness of this opportunity that you have in 2024. It's never been a time like this before where you can build these platforms without a team of developers and people to run it and all of the skill and going to college and all of that extra stuff and being a tech person. You can be a non-technical founder. Now, watch this. Uh, there's a website called MarketPad. It's a no-code education platform that helps people build websites, apps, and automations without writing a single line of code. Then there's Comet. I'm pretty sure if you're in this space, you've heard of Comet before. It's a marketplace for data science and machine learning tools developed uh, using no-code tools to connect AI practitioners. These are all no-code um, <laughs> They're worth millions, I'll just say that. I'm not saying that you're gonna be worth millions. I don't know what you're gonna do, disclaimer game, but you can be worth millions. Now check this out, VoiceFlow, a platform for designing, building, and launching conversational AI apps like Alexa Skills. Come on, this was built with no code and Google Assistant apps without code. Now, this one is probably the most popular one on this list. I know that that you've heard of this one before. It's called Zapier. Yeah, or Zapier. Some people call it with that. Well, while not fully built using no code, 
Uh, it enables users to create automated workflows between apps without coding, integrating AI and automation. Now, if you're in a marketing space, you have a marketing agency or something like that, SMMA or something like that, you have already been using Zapier, the top level people anyway. All right, then you got one called Pori, a no-code platform that allows users to build AI-powered web apps using Airtable data, often for job boards, directories, and marketplaces. So guys, those are five examples, successful examples, multi-million dollar and even billion dollar examples of platforms, websites, and apps build with no code AI, guys. Like, So you want to jump on this opportunity before it becomes just something your neighbor does too in his free time. Okay, by that time you've missed the boat. All right, so let's go. Yes, like it or not, developers will still be part of the big picture for many, even those going DIY. Again, more on that later. Let's cover the outcomes a non-tech founder might foresee and what features they should look for in a no-code app builder. The first use case, I just want an MVP as fast as possible. Well then, you'll want a no-code app builder with the smallest learning curve that still offers the functionality you need. The good news? For example, there's uh, no code websites or uh, app builders. Like I'll give you a good example, like a SMS software, right? Like their only function is to like blast out text messages. Okay. So it just needs the feature of you being able to upload a SMS, uh, SV, uh, S, uh, CSV file or you know, a text file or something that will have the list of phone numbers on there, maybe a scheduler with a calendar and, uh, you know, to give an SMS report and all of that and to be able to connect to Twilio. That's basic. You understand? You can literally get that from Bubble. So then it becomes just part of your, your marketing game plan and everything like that. So like that's something that I would recommend a brand new person in the space that just want to start a subscription business to go after something like that. Something that's like super simple. You won't need a lot of developers, maybe just somebody to connect the, uh, the script to a website and help you set up the subscription and everything like that. And that's pretty much that you can have that knocked out in a weekend. Then, like I said, it's just about getting your marketing plan going because is 90% marketing. Most of these websites and platforms copy each other. All the features, you can add a lot of that stuff a little bit later. It's about your marketing and getting out of there and positioning yourself to solve a problem. Is that for most MVPs, you won't need any fancy. Most no-code app builders will carry you to the MVP stage. So Pretty it much. really goes back to the smallest learning curve. Things to look for, the simplicity of the app builder's interface, a promise that what you see is what you get. Lots of common templates you can modify, whether it provides its own hosting and database support, ample and comprehensive tutorials in text and video formats, easy publishing on app stores for mobile apps, something this simple shouldn't be too expensive. Advantage, you get to MVP fast, which means you test fast and validate fast. Disadvantage, if an idea is validated and you want to start further development, you will have to move to a new platform and start all over again. My and I heard that before, like a lot of people will build their stuff on a like softer or bubble and whenever they want to leave the platform or make it their own, they have to go through all these legal hoops or, you know, bubble will try to own it and all of that stuff. So you just got to be careful. Like I said, get the bare bones, make sure you know what you're trying to do at the beginning of it as far as, you know, what your plans are of, as far as like migrating it to your own platform. Recommendation, a download for both web and mobile apps. Hey, what if I told you Jesus, that you can use a digital miner that apps? actually makes daily Stop. Second use case, I want to iterate beyond MVP myself. Time to turn your app from a valid experience to a lovable experience based on user feedback. You know it works. You just need it to work better. Now, I say just as if it's a walk in the park, but from here, it gets harder. You'll be dealing yeah. with more complicated logic and workflows and progress can feel non-existent to so. start. Ask yourself if you really want to be the person doing all this if yes you so this is the issue like when you get a lot of these templates guys you know a lot of these people make them bare bones so that they can upsell you like technical support or 
uh, adding on the features and all of that extra stuff. That's why I said I recommend starting with something with a, an extremely simple objective. You guys might want to have an all-in-one marketing suite or something like that, uh, but that's going to come with crazy amounts of bugs in it. You understand what I'm saying? That you're going to have to have a developer fix. So instead of that, waiting you know a whole year to have all of that, get something with one simple like primary objective for example a video conferencing tool all you need to be able to do is send out invites and be able to host enough people on uh, the video conferencing platform and everything like that and you'll be able to connect to Amazon uh, to, to get that type of hosting and all of that stuff so it has like one objective but if you're talking about I wanted to be able to like live stream I wanted to be able to record and uh, you know, upload recorded videos. I wanted to be able to text somebody before the video goes live and then call their mama and all of that. If you're doing all that, you're definitely going to have bugs in the software and you're going to be like afraid. You're going to be scared away from becoming a, a, a founder because you chose your first project to be something extremely complex. So if it's your first project, I recommend, I know you want to go hard and go home and all of that extra bull crap. But I recommend using something simple, blow that up, and then take the profits from that to uh, add, you know, using developers, add more complex features and stuff like that, or invest into a more complex software altogether using developers. Then you won't be at risk, okay? Just start right. Go with the no-code app builder that offers the most functionality. The features to look for, ability to create extensive user flows, an extensive library of plugins, built-in backend support, feeling that ease of third-party API integration, especially payment gateways and databases, allowing for collaborators, allowing for custom domains, built-in SEO tools, frequently updated backups, native app support for mobile apps, frequent product updates from the development team. Advantage, you won't be limited by the platform's capability for a long time. Disadvantage, the platform will be limited by your capabilities for some time. It will have the steepest learning curve and you will be asking lots of questions and looking up what other people have done. My recommendation, Bubble for web and Draftbit for mobile. Regardless of use case, look for strong community and vendor support. Here's an open secret. Developers don't know everything about the software we use. We exactly. So let me go ahead and give you the 10 most important takeaways from this video, just in case you guys have to leave. I don't want you to leave without the most important points, okay? So I went on ahead and did a summary for this. All right, so number one, best no-code app builders for non-tech users use Bubble for web apps. You heard them say that. And then uh, draft bit for mobile apps as the safest options. That's draft bit. It sounds like you're saying drop bit. That's why I wanted to have this written out. Okay, number two, strategic use of no-code tools. No-code app builders are useful, useful for building MVPs. That stands for minimum viable products, okay? But success relies heavily on a good strategy and execution. That's what I'm talking about. All of that, if you build it, they will come bull crap. We've been programmed on. They tricked us, dude. Like, there's a lot of good softwares and apps out there that have zero users on them. All right, and them people still work in McDonald's, okay? <laughs> All right, number three, choosing an app builder. Determine your long-term goals early on, whether you want to continue development yourself or only need an MVP. Because like I said, a lot of those, if you just have the primary objective of having something that just blasts out emails, <laughs> you can just take it as it is, put your branding on it and start marketing. You understand? Make sure you get the kinks and the bugs out of it and just go. It's mainly about branding. Your success is going to be about positioning, and branding and all of that. OK, um, so this will guide your choice of a no code platform. MVP focus. If, if your goal is to get an MVP fast, look for an app builder with simple interface. Um, like I said, software is super simple. You can get directories from there, all type of stuff, okay? All right, easy publishing and solid hosting. Uh, they recommend a dialo. That's what he recommended in the video. All right, iterating beyond MVP, okay? If you want to iterate and develop beyond the MVP, select a platform with extensive features like user flows, 
uh, third party API integration like I was talking about earlier where you'll need to like plug in Twilio and everything like that if you want to be able to send out SMS blasts okay uh, and built in SEO tools all right once again bubble and draft bid are recommended importance of community and support that is number six choose a platform with a strong user community and good vendor uh support oh leash um all right such as let's see official faqs forum tutorials are essential uh resources for learning as you go Limitation of no code tools, that's number seven. All right, no code app builders come with limitations such as lack of protection for intellectual property and potential performance issues as the app grows. All right, when, uh, when to transition to developers. That is number eight. When should you transition to developers? Once a validated idea grows beyond the capabilities of no code platforms, so when the features aren't there and stuff like that, it's time to engage professional developers to avoid hitting roadblocks. So if you have a, a specific vis, uh, you know, vision, like with details, you want it to be able to do this or do that or do this, and the APIs and all of that stuff don't come with the original template and all of that, then you might need to go ahead and get professional developers at that time. Now, number nine is option to hire developers for MVP. Developers can create MVPs using no code tools much faster than non tech founders. So, if you go straight to a place like Upwork or Fiverr or something like that, then you can just go ahead and talk straight to a developer right then and there let them know that you want to use bubble show them the template and let them know what you want it to be able to do then you can just like cut so many corners by just going straight to the horse's head <laughs> all right so uh, number 10 final developer insight no developer can turn a bad idea into a good app so it doesn't matter how skilled they are guys you understand what i'm saying like you want to make sure that your idea is good your strategy and you got your plan for execution on point as well because the developer can only do so much all right so once you're ready to scale bring in the pros for further development that is how you turn some of the best no code app builders into a way of making a crap load of money for your no code website or app okay go ahead and take the notes you'll see all of our ai tools and resources in the first pinned comment take advantage of them build something awesome y'all yeah.